Well, good morning. I'm Christopher Brandon with the Coeur d'Alene Public Library and the Community, uh, or excuse me, the Cooperative <laughs> Information Network. I don't know where I am today. And uh, I'm George Williams with the Northeast Kansas Library System. And uh, this is another episode of the uh, Tuesday Fantastic, what do we call this thing? Every other Tuesday video or Thursday. We're not terrific. Got terrific. Okay, the terrific every other Thursday video, which as many times is uh, often recorded on a Tuesday uh, or a Monday. Or I think we've even done some on Wednesdays and Fridays. So I don't know that we've ever recorded one on a Thursday. I don't know. Uh, I hope um, <laughs> so uh, we're sponsored by Koha US. Uh, we're part of the Koha US Education Committee. And you can find these videos if you go to koha-us.org koha and click on learn. And then scroll down and click on the watch Koha US original training videos. This will be video number 23. Wow, we've almost got uh, a year's worth. Wow, has it been that long? Um, and you'll also, on our Koha US page right now, you'll find the 2021 conference information, uh, which the conference will be in McKinney, Texas, September 21st through 24th. And registration is open. Um, the cost for registering is all listed here. If you're not coming to the actual conference, if you're just going to participate online, there's an online uh, free registration. Um, we'd like you to register those so that we know who's there so we know um, so we can keep in touch with everybody that shows up so uh, and today we have a special guest uh, this is the second time I think we've had a guest yeah uh, we have uh, Jason Robb from Southeast Kansas Library System and Jason is going to tell us about the uh, cloud library plugin last time we talked about uh, the hoopla plugin and so this time we're going to have Jason explain the cloud library plugin, uh, which works with the cloud library service. So take it away, Jason. Welcome. Cool. Thank you. Yep. yep. All right. So the cloud library plugin is a plugin. So we can look at that first. Um, administration. And if you're on the current version of Koha and a Bywater customer, you can just like search it up and install it, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. But otherwise, you can go to Bywater's GitHub page, download it, and then upload it and install it. And it's uh, Biblioteca Eva plugin is the name of it, um, because Biblioteca runs Cloud Library. So as far as configuration goes, there are a few things that you have to put in here. Um, you have to have a client ID and a client secret. So you, you'll fill in that information. Uh, you'll get that from the vendor. And um, also the library ID is from your vendor. Um, and then we set up just a special item type for electronic resources. And this is the item type code um, for that, which is just electronic. Uh, and that goes into the, I believe, the 942 item type record. Uh, of the record. We don't actually have items attached to our records. So um, it's, it's just dealing with the, at the record level. Uh, and then you get a few different options for how to authenticate um, the account because it does sync up the accounts in the OPAC and I can show you that. Um, for us, since our situation is a little different, our platform is administered by the State Library of Kansas. So um, everybody in the state is using the same account there. Um, so we had to set it up so that we're passing the, the state library card number into the plugin so that it can authenticate with that. Um, if you're a standalone or if you have your own cloud library subscription, then you can use uh, the card number from the patron account, the user ID from the patron account, or any patron attribute. And that's how I have it set up here is passing the patron attribute um, and I just created a new patron attribute for the Kansas library card number, um, which is here. And then I think it does have to be a unique identifier. That's the one important thing you have to check when you're setting this up 
if you're going to use a patron attribute. Otherwise, it won't um, it won't let you use it. Uh, which is why you can see I've only got two <laughs> options here, even though I have multiple um, codes here. It's because only my state library card number and my old ILS key are unique identifiers. Um, and then that goes over to the patron's account. And it's just another attribute here. Um, so you can put in our state library card number there. And that's all it takes to sync up the, the two accounts. Now, I don't know exactly what you have to do on the, the cloud library side of things because my account was already set up. Uh, you may have to do the initial first time user setup to on that side. Um, but once that's set up and synced up, then you're able to um, see your cloud library stuff in the OPEC, which is awesome. Um, the other thing that the plugin does is it can pull records. So if I click run tool, you can see it gives me the option to delete all the records. Um, it also gives me the option to fetch records. Um, and th this actually puts records into the catalog. It's not just like an asynchronous search like Hoopla does, but it actually adds the records to the ca catalog and then you can search them at the same time as your, um, your real physical item records. Wow. I will say that we didn't have any luck with this fetching tool. Um, the State Library's collection is close to 30,000 records, and it would always time out for me. Um, so there is also a, a related cron job that can be set up, and that's how we fetch records. It just goes out and grabs new records every Sunday and pumps them in, uh, which is nice because I don't have to worry about any of this um, extra maintenance. Um, does it also delete records once they leave Cloud Library? It does not. So you do have to manually kind of maintain that side of it. And I think that our plan for that is just to go go in and like delete all the records out twice a year or something and then let them come back in again. Um, oh, but, OK. That makes sense because if it's fetching records every Sunday, you could just I mean, you could potentially have another cron running to delete all those records every Saturday. Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's not that big of a concern for us, so we're just kind of right. playing that one by ear. Um, but yeah, it it doesn't have any way to know which, which items were deleted. Um, so what else? Um, in the catalog, like I said, if, if you do a search, they're just records in there, like the physical item record. Um, one kind of cool thing that this gave us that we didn't have before is a little more backend knowledge. Um, since the state administers our platform, we don't really have any sort of backend access to that. But the plugin is able to pull in actual um, information, copy information. So we can see that this one has, we, um, the state owns four total copies. And one's on loan, no, none are on hold. Down here, I can see that the iYobook version of this has six copies, six on loan, 54 on hold. So a little insider information there, which is handy. Um, when you click into the record, it's again fetching availability at the point you click that. So it's just using the API, oh. API to talk back and forth. Um, so you're getting live data every time there. And then in the OPAC, it's same deal. I do a search. Um, they don't see as much. Since I'm logged into my account, and my account's already synced up. I just get a checkout button here because that one's available, um, as we saw on the or the staff side. Uh, and then this one, since it's not available, I can place the hold and get put on a wait list. Um, and I imagine if you're not logged in, it'll, it'll it'll give you something. It'll show you something else there. Correct. Yes. If I log out and do the same search, it's going to say, please log in, I think, something to that effect. I assume. Log in to see cloud availability. OK. I assume that with the um, placing the hold, it's pulling information from a cloud library account, not from your Koha account. Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. 
So it doesn't so, whether or not you have an email address in your Koha account, it's whether or not you have it set up in there. And so each patron is going to have their own credentials and information uh, profile set up in in a cloud library then? Correct, yes. So when you when you first set up cloud library, I think you have to set up, for us, it, it's just a matter of logging in with your um, state library card number and password, and that gets you right into the cloud library service. Um, so yeah, so, so that, that, that's all that it takes to sync that up. And then it's, it's linking based on the card number to the account and then pulling that information back in. So um, on my account summary, you can see that it, there's that hold I just placed. I can cancel it from here. Uh, when that's ready, it'll move down to ready for checkout and I can check it out directly from here. Um, and then if I had current checkouts, it would let me also return them from here. Cool. So that seems like a pretty pretty slick system. Yeah, I especially like that it'll pull the records in and out. You know, that there's different ways to do that, either through the task in the in the tool, or if there's a lot of stuff you can set up that cron. Yep. You said that the um, the tool for um, pulling or getting the uh, the records uh, times out on you because of how much content there is. Um, is it just the web page that times out, or um, if you let it time out and or, and you still you know use the tool, does it do it in the background or? Because I know that some some tools will continue working even though the the web page times out. So when you hit fetch records on this page, it's all like, it's not reloading the page at all. It, it just, it does it in little chunks. So it'll, it'll say like so many records added, so many records added, so many records added. Um, and I think that does work for uh, smaller sites and it may work for us now since we would just be pulling the most recent. Uh, but when we tried to pull everything, um, that it just took too long basically. And I let it run overnight at one point and I'm pretty sure that like when it hit the overnight cron job processes and that's really resource intensive on our system that it just gave up and didn't, <laughs> it couldn't complete. Never um, finished, huh? Right, um, but the cron job did did work, um, got past all those barriers and uh, made, made everything easy peasy. And um, Nick is the one that developed this plugin. So he's, he knows all and he can help you <laughs> if you can't get it working. Um, one thing that we did run into is every once in a while, we'd have a record pop up that said something like can wish in all caps um, in the OPAC, which we didn't think was very user friendly. And those are records that uh, could be suggested for purchase when you're on the cloud library side of things, like actually logged into that platform, but Koha didn't really know how to handle them. Mm -hmm. so. Um, Nick went in and set it up so that those are at least hidden um, so that your patrons aren't getting confused and you're not rubbing it in their face that we don't have it, but you can wish for it. So um, that's really the only major kind of weird hiccup we had when we implemented it, other than getting it working. Um, it did take a little bit to get it working just because it hadn't, we didn't have the latest version or we didn't. There were some tweaks that needed made, but it is fully functional for us at this point. It's very cool. I, I like all these things and integrate things into, into the public catalogs that you don't have to search. So you don't have to search 3M Cloud Library and then, and then leave that catalog to search the other catalog. It's having everything in one place is, is great, so. Yeah, it, it definitely increases access to the resources available. And that's, that was our main goal because otherwise, I mean, the, the patients have to go to four different places to get physical mm -hmm. records, digital records from cloud, digital records from Hoopla. So if we can bring that all into one, one single search um, and they can see everything available to them just in Koha, I think that's great uh, customer service. If I, I think the one, the one thing that I can see as being the difficulty, you know, I and how did you handle this where you have to add the state library card to everybody's account? So we're how just long doing did it, that take? We're doing it as a sort of moving forward 
type thing. Okay. We didn't go back through and um, populate that information. Uh, just if the patron wants to set it up, then the librarian can go in and add it. We also did set it up on the OPAC where if a patron self-registers, um, or not self-registers, sorry, I need to be logged in. If they can go into their account information and and they can add the card number themselves. They can add the card number themselves. Okay, that's cool. Uh, that still needs approved on the, the staff side because it's a pending modification. But but that's one way for the librarian to say, hey, go put this in and then I'll, I'll upgrade your account so that you can have 3M access and synchronization. Cool. If, if I had a, a can wish link, I would click it and say, I wish that uh, uh, Overdrive worked the same way and incorporated the records rather than having to go through its own little module. But that's, that's pretty cool. I, you know, it would be nice if other resources worked uh, this well. Well, that, yes. that would be a problem, I think, with Hoopla, because like I said, when we talked about the Hoopla plugin, the reason that we don't add those records directly to Koha is because there are so many of them. Our catalog would only be like 30% physical items and 70% Hoopla items if we added all the Hoopla records. Uh, but Cloud Library is only, you know, for the state of Kansas is only 30,000. So that's not a significant number compared to the rest of our system. Right. But with, with some services, it might be overwhelming. Yep. Uh, we used to upload Hoopla records, import Hoopla records, and we would just do like the top 500 or whatever. But yeah. it's also nice to not have to worry about that. Um, it's nice that we can just have Hoopla there on the side. And when a search is done, it, it pops up. So. Um, yeah, yeah I, that was I, a chore every month for me. Yeah, it's, it was like an hour, an hour and a half at a time. So, cron job sounds great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely recommend the cron job if you're going to start using the cloud library plugin. Well, Jason, thank you so much for sharing uh, this. I, I had not seen this plugin before and it's always great to learn about new tools and new plugins and it's you know certainly something that's helpful to those that uh, have cloud library and I hope people will take advantage of using that plugin. Sure. I know I'm gonna ask Jason some questions later about getting this up in our system because we're also in Kansas. All right. Well thank you for joining us and uh, we'll see everybody Again in two weeks. See y'all later. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> <laughs>